Hi. I didn't want to be late this time. <laughs> Four minutes to spare. You're good. And we're live on YouTube. Luke. John, we're live on YouTube. Hi, John. Hi, Charlene. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, everybody. Okay, so there are three of us. I'll get started just a smidge early. I call the meeting to order. Welcome, everybody. Um, I wanted to move to approve the minutes as they were submitted um, from our meeting on April 27th. Can I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank so you. So welcome to our committee members and to those of us who are joining via YouTube. Thank you all for participating in the comprehensive plan process. Um, to those of you on YouTube, if you are joining us for the first time tonight, we will be picking up exactly where we left off last week and really diving deeper into project management topics. So if you happen to be interested in hearing more about the comprehensive plan in general, um, especially more about our timeline for the, the project work over the next few years, I encourage you to take a look at the recording from last week from April 27th, which is available on YouTube. Um, our page on the town website will continue to have the most up-to-date information from our committee, uh, including a note, please save the date for June 8th. At 7.30, we will be hosting an introductory meeting for the community, which will formally introduce our committee members and the comprehensive planning process. So with that, um, I would like to move into our first topic, which is just revisiting our, our committee mission statement. And let me just share my screen.
Okay, can everybody see that? No, yeah. Okay, great. So last week we adopted the these two bullets as working text um, and that is posted on our website, on our webpage, I should say, our little section of the town website. And um, there was a little back and forth and trying to figure out if we should add a third bullet, um, which would further clarify what the committee mandate is. So there's a stab at the third bullet point that we could add here. Um, so this says ensure the updated plan acknowledges the fluid and ever changing, sorry, ever evolving nature of the Lewisboro community while making clear and actionable recommendations to the town board. Um, so maybe we just go around. Hi, Mark, I see you, you joined. So let's go around and just throw out some other ideas or edits to this or comments in general. Um, maybe John, you want to kick off? Um, I kind of like it the way it is. <laughs> Just with the two bullets? No, with the, adding the third. Oh, okay. That's great. Charlene? Well, one of the things that we're charged uh, with from the town board is um, preparing or having prepared an RFP in order to um, engage some consultants. So that really should be in our mission statement too, although it's gonna be, you know, finished. I don't think that's, uh, actually, that's just a, a detail. I mean, the, the RFP is a way to get to the end. Okay, I'm fine with that. Uh, Mark, you're on mute. Oh, and Larry's here too. Hi, Larry. So this is our mission statement and... Oh yeah, sorry. You, so we have the first two bullets and this is for Larry too. We have the first two bullets that we've already agreed on. So the topic we're discussing is potentially adding a third bullet and based on the the ideas we've kicked around in the past and some back and forth between meetings this is the potential third bullet point we're discussing uh okay i'm giving it some thought okay why don't you uh you can move on to larry while i mull this over mm -hmm. and we don't have to decide tonight but larry do you have any initial thoughts just looking at it Um, for the third bullet point, um, well, I think it's entirely appropriate to be part of the, part of the mission statement. Um, and it, and it reflects some of the themes that we, um, discussed at the, at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't have anything to add to it. Um, okay but I, I do think it's appropriate and, and that we should consider expanding the, the emission statement to include, include that bullet point. Right, so <laughs> here's a couple hit. Um, my dog will start, my, my, my dog will start howling in a minute. <laughs> I know Katie? it's that time after dinner. Mm -hmm. Like when night falls and it's, and they've had their dinner. It's just, yep. They're ready to howl. Did your come out? Yes, Charlene. Everything, um, and, and this is just the thought, is, is there any um, thought to having a statement saying that we are going to preserve the quality of life that we have also? Because everything is going to the future, which is great. But there is a present that some people, that portions of, uh, of it, um, they, so, some people like. Mm -hmm. And I think we should just recognize that the, um, the, the town is not, it, you know, is, is a very well-run, good 
town with a lot of attributes and we want to make it better. So it's just a thought that maybe we should give some um, a shout out to the present mm -hmm. and to preserve a quality of life that we, we, we like, which does not negate anything there. You know, I would preserve kind of says- well, It doesn't have to be preserved. Could yeah, be I, I, mean, I, 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 I think your idea is, is on. I think we need to pick a phrasing that includes preserve and and um, reviews or looks at it or you know brings in the the, the idea that we might want to uh, make it better so I don't know something mm -hmm. to preserve and enhance yeah something like that yeah that that's good it, just just giving just a a statement that we recognize that there are very good things in the town of Lewisboro now Mm -hmm. First, when we do our survey, we might find that people don't agree with us. <laughs> that's true. And that's why we're doing the survey. Okay. Well, um, I only have three more minutes budgeted today to talk about this. So we can, there's no rush. and We already have the first two bullets um, oh, agreed upon. You. Like first bullet, engage the Lewisboro community um, in order to inform the future of our town and capture this vision in an updated comprehensive plan. Because well, otherwise we've got envision and vision in the same sentence, envision and vision. So you might wanna say first bullet point, engage the Lewisburg community in order to perhaps inform the future of our town and capture this vision in an updated. Okay, we can take that. And then the last one, where it says, ensure the updated plan acknowledges the fluid and ever ever evolving, which is kind of redundant, fluid and ever evolving, you might want to say, just ensure the updated plan reflects the evolving nature of the Lewis, Lewisboro community. Just mm -hmm. ensure the updated plan reflects the evolving nature of the Lewisboro community. I'm just thinking how you can make it more terse. Can succinct. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I think the inform is a good word. I know words matter. I just looked it up quickly. Definition inform. I mean, I thought I knew what the word meant, but um, I'm just reading from uh, the definition from Oxford. Give an essential or formative principle or quality to. Mm -hmm. I think that's a. I think that's an appropriate word that Mark suggested. Mm -hmm. Give an essential or formative principle or quality to inform. Okay. Does that, how mm -hmm. do, do, do other folks like inform other rather than envision? Fine. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't think envision works there. So I will we'll change this to in order to inform. I may turn this over to the professional writer in my family to have her take a look at this too. <laughs> sure. Yeah, the more the merrier. Um, I'm just going to keep that commented. That way we know we changed it so we can change it on the website too. Okay, well, let's... Um, this document's out on our uh, drive somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, everybody. So let's move on just in the interest of time. Um, the next 20 minutes are to get an update on the initial survey progress. But um, where we were thinking would be a good place to start is to highlight um, some of the other surveys that are out there in the world that other towns have used, excuse me, to kick off their comprehensive planning processes. Um, so I have them on my screen. We can just kind of walk through them one by one. Um, Larry, if you have any prepared thoughts or order you would prefer to go in, I defer to you. 
you're on you're on mute sorry about okay. that um yeah i was looking at them just before the meeting and reviewing them again and i think if um i tried to order them in the links that i sent out are mm -hmm. uh, the ones that i think thought were appropriate okay so great. if you have the if you have those um this was this is interesting this is from uh, Sudbury Massachusetts I believe and what I thought was interesting about um, this this survey and how they uh, formulated it is they had like three big very big very open ended questions on here where you can see um, they're on the screen right there one two three um, and they invited the community to respond and then what they did was um, the committee and the consultant, it looks like if you scroll down, they um, basically summarized the responses into general categories. Um, and um, if you scroll down some more into the next page, I believe a little bit further, they put it into tables um, to show, there we go, um, in, the, in the general categories. So you could see like for those um, residents that suggested something relating to economic development, they categorized um, what the strategy, what, what the strategies uh, would be to address them and who should be involved. And those were part of the questions that they asked the community to respond to is what were the, you know, the general themes um, and um, what would the strategies be to address them and who should, who should address them. And then if you scroll down to the end of this document for a, a few more pages, there's some general demographic uh, questions that I think are also very good. You could see how long have you lived in, in Sudbury? Um, and there were some other ones about other demographics, the age, um, how people would identify themselves by ethnicity and so forth. So that you could understand um, who you're talking to or at least who is talking to you and who's responding to the survey. Um, this also had a good question at the end, how would you like to stay involved in the master planning survey so it could um, you know, if we were to use a question like that, we could understand how um, residents, how would be best to communicate to residents going forward. So I thought this was kind of interesting that the questions were very big ideas and very kind of open ended. And it took some work. Um, I'm sure it took some work for the uh, reviewers to, to put their responses together. But by being open ended questions, I think they left a lot of room um, without trying to like kind of preform or push a certain agenda to the community, it kind of left big open ended questions and, and left uh, the response up to the community members. I do think the demographic questions are really important um, because I wouldn't want to be in a position uh, in looking at their survey results and have like one organization in town who was really active and engaged and got their members engaged and I wouldn't want to have an inordinate number of responses from a certain demographic. So by collecting at least some basic demographic information and where people live, um, we could better understand when we're collating the responses and analyzing the responses. If we have like, uh, for instance, a lot of responses from Golden's Bridge and those um, respondents uh, are focused on one issue, we could identify that. Um, as a geographic issue and not necessarily an issue that's um, impacting the entire town of Lewisboro. Mm -hmm. so, so this is one example. And then if, if we could just look at one more, um, maybe is uh, the one from Texas, this one, mm -hmm. this is the one, yep. So this one is a little bit different. They used a committee uh, to predetermine um, what what areas they wanted to focus on. So they had a committee of 12 people that pre-identified what the issues were with the town. And then they asked specific questions about those issues. So you could see in this survey, now these are the responses. Um, you could see in this, in this survey that these are very, well, this one's a little bit open-ended, but they gave, you would check a box. Um, so the, the responses were kind of predetermined. They weren't open-ended questions. You would check off a box as the respondent um, on your reply. Mm -hmm. So these, this was kind of a survey that was being, you know, the responses that you're gonna get back are gonna be limited to the questions because they're multiple choice questions. So this is an, a different example where a town, they had very specific um, issues that they predetermined and they, um, 
they, I guess they had ideas about how these issues can be resolved and they kind of led the respondents um, to those questions. Both of them are initial surveys. And I also think it's key um, because of all the surveys that I looked at, um, they were very limited. They weren't surveys with 60, 70, 80 questions. They were surveys with three questions plus some demographic questions, like the one that we just saw. Or this one I think had uh, 14 or 15 questions. Um, there was another one um, from Sudbury. I think you have it up on the screen um, that also is, oh, this one we looked at together. Um, I think it was Newtown Borough, another one in Massachusetts that um, also had like a very limited number of, of questions that they asked respondents to respond to. And actually um, maybe the Newtown Borough, I think I see it up on your screen, Katie. Yes, I don't know why all this, there we go. Um, this one I thought was uh, just, if you just leave it right at the top right here, because um, the questions are you know more of the same, some open-ended ones and some specific ones. But what I liked about this survey is that it provided some like basic information about what the community was trying to do and what how this relates to the planning process. Um, and I thought that was appropriate because that's what we're engaged in, not just collecting information, but I think at this stage of the process, we're also kind of informing the community of what we're trying to do. So I liked the fact that this is doing both. It provides a little information about the process and then it, it goes into the questions. Mm -hmm. So that, that's all I have for my presentation. There's a lot of other surveys and I sent around some other links, but I just want to highlight those kind of those two general ways that I saw as communities going about conducting the surveys is you have the open-ended questions that you're really trying to gather information without leading the respondent too much. And then you have the very specific questions where you have more multiple choice, where you know what the issues are and you know what the possible solutions are and you're trying to kind of lead the respondent. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I think probably there's a, a mix in between that I would think we would want to go with because um, mm -hmm. we have identified certain certain issues, I think, um, that we perceive as the issues at least, at least. But I, I, I also want to, myself, I want to learn what the, what the community thinks because I don't want to presuppose that I'm, I know everything about what everybody thinks in the community. So yeah, we're what, definitely all on the same page about that. Um, okay, well, thank you, Larry. Maybe we'll just go around and have here follow-up thoughts or reactions from folks. Charlene, I saw that you have your hand up. I really like the Newton Borough resident um, introduction. That, that Larry, that, that really does do something. Uh, it just informs the community of what we're doing. At this point though, I mean, we're only taking some initial questions um, for a, um, an idea of where the community stands. If I see some of the others, it looks to me that some of the others are um, done with the help of a consultant. You know, the specific questions I would be very uncomfortable to ask because like, you know, anything about sewers or anything like that, we, we really don't know that we're going in that direction or we can go in that direction that we uh, that the um, the town could uh, support some of those infrastructures. So I would hesitate before we meet with the uh, consultant to do a terribly in depth um, survey. Mm -hmm. um, John, you want to go next? Yeah. Um, first of all, I, the Texas one strikes me as just purely biased. And uh, introduces a bias. And um, as someone who used to not only hire market researchers, but watch what you know, million dollar market research would come in with a predetermined bias, you really don't wanna do that. <laughs> so I agree with Charlene. I think having the introduction that sets the stage is an excellent idea because um, you wanna motivate people to send the thing back. Um, I think the demographics, if you're going to ask, should be at the end, uh, just so you don't turn people off. Um, but I think um, it needs to be on the open-ended side, so we don't introduce the bias. 
the other thing I think we need to do, and I don't know whether we're going to do one survey or multiples, but you really want to know for our purposes, what information are we trying to gather? And, and then construct it so that you uh, hope <laughs> that you'll get some of that back with, without, without being too detailed. So you want to, I think you want to touch on areas and, and the, the uh, list I put out was too detailed for sure. But I just wanted to get something out there. Uh, I, I like to get stuff out there to, to think about and then uh, react to and, and which is good because most people did. Um, but I think we have to be open and I think the Sudbury one's not too bad. Um, if I get a chance, I actually happen to know the state rep from Sudbury, Massachusetts. So if I get a chance to talk to him, I'll ask him about it. Great, thank you. Mark, Mark do you have follow-up co comments? Uh, so is there a way we can frame, uh, start to frame and guide the respondents so that they are educated about the purview of the master plan? In other words, uh, if, if we went out there and say, hey, we're working on a master plan, I'd like your response. Yeah, I'd like really, number one, reduce my taxes. Number two, school start time should be later for teenagers. I mean, what if, like just how do we sort of avoid getting into a list of things that is not, like how would we kind of give them one sentence about, we want your input on master plan, which typically is about land use and infrastructure, or you know, there's a way to. Sure. Well, again, maybe by having categories, we can avoid, you know, can at least get them to the areas that we can touch. So to synthesize what I'm hearing, it seems like we want to balance, we definitely want to be open-ended in the sense that we do not want to be guiding participants to answer with any bias of any kind. Um, and we, and based on previous discussions, I love the idea of open-ended questions, but we do need to be able to synthesize the answers we get back so that we can summarize them for the consultants and for the public without spend, having to spend tons and tons of hours doing so. Um, one idea that Larry had was we'd have to look into the technology of this, but if we use open-ended questions, we can then use word maps where um, it's a graphic that shows how a bunch of words and words that were repeated multiple times get bigger and more bold. Um, some kind of tool like that would be a really great way to easily synthesize open-ended answers. Um, but I think we're all in agreement that we need it to be broad and ha give people space for open-ended questions. And as we continue to move forward with crafting it, which Larry is, is wonderfully taking the lead on um, with all of our help as needed, um, you know, we'll, we can synthesize things down a little bit more, but I think this was helpful in sort of taking the temperature on what we want the survey to be. Um, and we only have five more minutes to discuss it. So we're, we're not gonna get into details about, um, you know, what, what the questions are um, today. But Larry, what are your thoughts after hearing from everybody? Um, well, I think, uh, I think with some work, we could probably, you know, come up with with a number of open-ended questions that we can all all agree on, mm -hmm. um, I you know I don't know that we're ready to bring um, consultant in at this point to help with the survey, and I don't know that we need to if we're just really keeping it simple and just trying to cover like big themes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mark, your your idea about like putting some limiters on this is entirely appropriate, and we're like right up in the in the in the introductory, if we do something like what's on the screen, um, you know, it would it would be a good idea to kind of just point out that these school how the schools 
Lewisburg, Stonewall Lewisburg school system is not part of our purview. Mm -hmm. um, and just right, right out front to, to state something like that. Yeah. Um, what I was thinking about is, um, I also was looking at the timeline. It did seem like most of these other communities gave a couple of months for um, respondents mm. um, to, to, to contribute. And, um, you know, I was originally, I was thinking, well, this is something we can get out to the community quickly and we could have responses before a meeting, but I don't know that that's really, really enough time. I think if we are aiming for a meeting in, in June, um, maybe we can get the survey kicked off before the meeting or at the meeting. And maybe the meeting is more of, um, it's just more informational, but I don't want to get ahead of myself on the agenda. No, I think that that was my impression um, that it's a good point. We want to give people time to answer because that ensures that we'll, well, it makes the chances that we'll get more responses better. Um, I think our thinking was when we put together the timeline, if I'm remembering correctly, that we would get the survey out ideally either right before or at the same time as the kickoff meeting on June 8th. And then ideally we would get responses back um, by August. And that, that way when we finish the RFP in August, we can incorporate the responses from the survey. I mean, that, that makes it a little tight, but we might need to, we might need to push, push out the, when we're releasing the RFP based on when we get survey responses back. Larry, did, was there anything in there that told them how they got it out? Because I think one of the issues is gonna be is how to get coverage and how do we get it? We got 12,000 residents. I don't know, maybe they're less, half of them are adults maybe or less. Uh, how do we, how do we get a significant penetration? Yeah, well, uh, it seemed like a lot of the communities used SurveyMonkey, um, which is a technology tool. Um, it's relatively simple to use. I know um, when I was involved more actively with the um, Lewisboro Boy Scout troop, um, we used it amongst our troop members. Now we're talking about a lar much larger group uh, for distribution, but I think um, I think that would allow us to provide uh, an email with a link and somebody could link into the form to fill out the survey. And then that survey monkey is a tool where you can um, keep track of the respondents and you could keep it anonymous if you want, um, but you could have the respondents um, enter their names if you like, or you could keep it anonymous. And once you get all the, um, the uh, responses, you can tabulate them and collate them and analyze them um, so it, it does provide a, a tool specifically for surveys. Assuming computer literacy. Yes. Right. So let's discuss at a later meeting or between meetings, sort of the rollout plan that we'll have to consider um, access to computer internet and ability to, to use those. Um, but, but Katie, just one other thing. Um, so for, for the steering committee as a group, we're using the Google platform. And Google also has a forms tool, which is very similar. You could use it for, for surveys and to tabulate results. So there's, I didn't want to sell SurveyMonkey. There's like multiple tools that we could use once we have this, a survey that's ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll, we can look at those simultaneously as we develop the survey. Um, Charlene, I saw you had your hand up or maybe, did you um, I, I think it was answered. I mean, there's many ways of doing, you can use departments uh, like the recreation department because maybe we need some um, hard copies too for some yeah. of the older people. So we, I, I think the the town will help us out. We can okay. ask Dan later. Plan for sure. Go okay. out to the uh, assessor of taxes. She's got everybody's. Uh... <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, I uh, I want to make sure we give we move on to the next topic, which is checking in on the RFP progress. Um, but it sounds like we know what our follow-up actions are here. We can circle back to those at the end of the meeting as well. Um, thank you, Larry, for your work on this and your continued work on this. We, we all really appreciate it and just let us know how we can jump in and help you. Um, and I know we have the, the document that we can all look at and and interact with them in its preliminary form on the drive as well. 
Um, so moving to the RFP. Um, so the idea with the RFP is that we do we do want to have survey responses back um, that we can incorporate those findings into the RFP document before it's finalized. So tonight we were thinking we would continue to discuss um, potential scope or areas of focus that we can put into the RFP in a menu fashion that a consultant can re reply to um, saying, yes, this area would be included or this area would, would cost extra. Um, but just saying this um, so we all know that any discussion of scope tonight is preliminary and obviously can be updated and amended and ideally with community input. So let's, uh, let's use these next 18 minutes or so, eight, 20 minutes to, um, to look at our scope document that we've been working on in the past. And um, one place just to sort of kick it off is thinking about um, we all we all are in agreement that the items from the 1985 plan um, will be somehow touched upon in the RFP, whether it be as part of the history or as part of potential areas to revisit. Um, I thought maybe it would be helpful to continue going down the list of these other town plans that um, that John kicked off gathering for us and just see if there are areas there that weren't addressed in the Lewisboro 1985 plan. Um, and to help that move more quickly, I pre went through and just highlighted, I, it's very possible I missed some. So having more eyes is great, but I you know, highlighted, for example, here, looking back at 1985, our 1985 plan versus these other plans that are out there, um, just topics um, that weren't explicitly mentioned. One of them would be zoning. Um, at least I, it was probably mentioned in the plan, but as far as a bullet point, like a full section of the RFP. Um, but please uh, anyone jump in if they see an interesting thing that jumps out at them. I would say zoning was probably left out. And I think Charlene touched on this before in that um, that's the purview of the town board. So uh, I think that's a, that's an effect of our recommendations of how they implement some of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know that we can actually suggest zoning. Right, I'm not exactly sure of the context of how that was outlined in the North Salem plan. I I think that what usually what can happen is that you can include uh, with whatever recommendations they're making and whatever is accepted zoning amendments, because remember, there's a draft plan that's sent out and that the town looks at it and they may at that point in time want some zoning amendments um, written. Uh, and that, that, that's something that's very usual. And it usually costs more um, and extra, but you can always sort of decide whether you want it or not. Because remember, there's going to be a look-see at our, our, the zoning and how it relates to the master plan. You know, the, you, and if there are differentiations or what has to be changed in order for the master plan to be uh, implemented. So our recommendations can possibly include zoning amendments. Okay, great. Um, obviously, 1985 was a different time. Sustainability, um, North Castle also mentioned economic development, historical asset and cultural assets programs, mobility, quality of life, um, I'll just keep going. And if, if any of these spur conversations, great. If not, we have this document we can refer back to. I forget which one had it, but I remember marketability was, it was in one of them. And I find that intriguing because yeah. uh, um, 
One of the things I think that Lewisburg doesn't do a good job of is marketability. And um, of course you have to figure to what end, but it seems to me that uh, in a, in a revenue strapped town, <laughs> you may want to find ways to uh, market the assets of the town to the effect of Im improving that somewhat. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of the assets that we have. Sure. Fiscal stability, speaking of. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh yeah, I thought it was interesting that Cortland had actually engaged the community to develop sustainability principles that guided their plan. The vision, the vision statement is a huge thing. Um, you see it pop up in a lot of these plans. And I know in, um, in some of the research I've done on best practices, um, for master plans now, having a vision statement is is really important. Um, so I, I look forward to, I know we have outlined in our timeline, you know, the consultants would do a visioning exercise with the community. So we could craft like a unique Lewisboro vision statement, which would be great. Um, implementation tools, um, charts and graphs and suggestions about priorities. Um, that would be something that I would really like to see the consultants kind of explain how they would do that and what kind of infographics they would use and how they would make that something that is a really valuable asset to the town board. Like having just a really good set of pages that have a summary of what we're suggesting and what the town, the community thinks are priorities. Oh, Sud Sudbury had a nice positive opening to their plan that was what we love about our town. Um, I thought that was interesting. Okay, so because Charlene is taking the lead on drafting the RFP, and thank you for that. Um, any any thoughts just on, or questions for the group um, as you kind of are working on the document behind the scenes, anything that we can help with or questions you have for us? Well, it's really sort of an outline and there are a number of areas that, um, that I sort of put in that will have to be filled in. So uh, if anybody has any thoughts on any of them or have any additions, because many of them really follow what we have uh, you know, before us. Um, there were also uh, are two things that I, I sort of found out in, uh, just in passing. One is, from what I understand, and this goes to, to many of Mark's questions, the DOH is, um, is reviewing their records and is looking to update them. Uh, and from what I understand, that means uh, looking to see that we get into the 21st century with some of our septic things. So uh, that, that should be, we should have an inkling of what they're going to do. And I'm sure that they will share it with uh, the consultants and incorporate that. And, and I, was, I was very happy to hear that. The second thing that you know, I'm sure many of you know, I, I just missed it. Um, there is a, I think the name of the um, Cityscape is the name of the consultants. They're doing a Northern Westchester review of the wireless uh, infrastructure needs. And it's being paid for by the county. It's like a $190,000 um, study. And I think that will also um, help us 
and help the consultants in looking at um, various means of where, what it is, is a collaborative e effort that you may have something in Lewisboro that would really help out North Salem uh, also, and they need not uh, have something. They may be able to put something somewhere that will help us out also. So we're not doing it just in a vacuum and in silos. That's somewhat, that's limited to self towers, I think. Uh, it, I think it's pretty broader than that from when I, uh, what I, I saw the first, uh, when it was the first discussion at the town board, it seemed to be, it was about cell towers, but I would, I would hope, I would be happy if it was broader. I suggested to Peter. Yeah, I, I, I think it's broadband too, John. Yeah, I, I mean, um, we need to confirm that, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could get in touch with the cityscape person if, if you want and find out what the status, because I don't know when it's going to be finished either. Yeah. For the purposes of the RFP, is that something that we, we want to mention and draw the consultant's attention to so they're aware? Exactly. But what, how, yeah, do we need to go into that much more detail about it? Uh, we don't have to go in, into any detail, but we would have to give them, you know, uh, we would have to know when the date is that it's going to be completed. But there is a section there that I said, these are the documents you should look at, you know, including but not limited to. But certainly those are documents that, you know, we have to remember to provide them with. Right. Got it. Question. Mm -hmm. um, Charlene, would, would it be appropriate for the, like, do we need to clarify in the RFP um, anything about the the comprehensive plan map for the town, or is that a, assumed to be kind of part of the part of the plan? I, I believe there's something stated in 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 the RFP, but I'll check and maybe I just left it out. Thank you, you know, for pointing it yeah, out. I, I didn't get a chance to review the work that you did. Yeah, uh, but I I do think that's important. You know, as the as the graphic component or components of the plan. Mm -hmm. um, we did, as a group, we did get the map from 1985. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty um, sure that it was included. In okay, the great. I would say in general, um, I don't know where this would fit into the RFP, but I definitely would love to compare and contrast the consultant's ability to put together a final product that has really engaging visual graphics, um, infographics, I think is the right word for it, you know, how they can portray information visually so that, you know, we, we want people to be able to look at the document and really dive into it and get excited. You can, you can put that right into the RFP and ask them that, that that's perfectly legitimate. Okay, great. Does anybody else have questions or thoughts for Charlene? Okay, then I think where we we go from here. By the way, it, before we move on, are there things, do you have a sense, Charlene, of the things we need to know that maybe we don't know now before we put this thing out? Well, that's what I was hoping the RFP would do. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, that's what I was hoping the survey would do. In fact, that's the impression I got in the beginning that we would know, because otherwise this is our document without anybody's input actually. Yeah. And I thought the survey was geared towards getting, you know, what the residents are interested in, not in detail, but I, I thought it was a more broad scope of the things because some of the things that you know I, I I've mentioned are obviously the hamlets that's that's an area of concern uh affordable housing technology uh complete streets maybe maybe they're interested in it maybe they're not um reuse and repurpose of properties I think that's something that is, is something that we have to look at. The underdeveloped properties, 
So um, climate change, historic designations, our relationship with New York uh, DEP. Yeah, what I, what I hear all the time is access to public transportation. That that's another thing. Yeah, and 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 that's why I think we really need uh, some input from the survey before we fill it out completely. I would like any you know all of you to to help me in filling in the blanks over there because it, it it needs it needs a narrative in each one what we're really looking at. Sure. Yeah, so I think a good starting point is for areas of focus concern, we use the topics from the previous master plan. We use these topics from other plans that we've looked at. We mention new and emerging areas of interest and focus. And then we, and we, you know, also get the survey responses back and populate those as necessary too, so that we've got a starting point with the RFP, but once we get the survey responses back, we can finish it up and then issue it to consultants. Um, and, you know, if we, just because we don't mention something in the RFP doesn't mean it doesn't end up in the final plan. Exactly. It's really just, what do we want to hear the consultants describe? Um, so it, we're definitely not setting the outline of the final master plan on a certain path by including or not including something in the RFP. So hopefully that relieves a little bit of pressure that this has to be the perfect document. <laughs> okay, well, we can, uh, if there are no other thoughts on that topic, the, the next topic is just quickly um, looking at the agenda for our introductory meeting on June 8th. Um, first, I wanted to see how folks thought about this graphic as a save the date. Um, I just threw this together really quickly, but um, my, my hope is that we can tap into the town resources and you know the logistics of all that can be discussed offline but just start e emailing this out, getting it posted to social media so that as much as many people know ahead of time as possible that we are hosting this meeting on June 8th and, um, and that we would love to have them join us. Um, unless anybody has any objections, I'm looking at your faces, everybody seems. I don't think you put the graphic up. Oh, really? You can't see it? No, we. I'm still on scope. Oh, that's why your faces all look <laughs> blank. Blank. Okay, new share. Ah, okay. Forgive my lack of Zoom proficiency here. There we go. Ah, that makes more sense. <laughs> nice. Any, any, if any objection? No. Okay, can I move to adopt this graphic as our official save the date and we will start working on getting it out to people? I move, I mean, not can I move. Uh, just discussion. Uh, can we just we discuss for a minute? Yeah, sure. So, right. so meet the comprehensive plan steering committee. Uh, so is this interactive? We have not decided yet. Okay, so unlike a town meeting where there's a moderator and there's, you know, trying to, somebody's like a gatekeeper to prevent Zoom bombing and all that, um, we're not yeah. trying to set this up with, you know, state your name and address and you have, you know, 15 seconds for your comment or anything like that. So then when I think of the YouTube platform, this shows how out of touch I am. I, I don't think of that as being an interactive. That's more like you could just play it, but you can't, it's not like Zoom where you can interact. So do we really mean it's YouTube or do we just want to meet like right. the web? That's a good point. Yeah, are we going to have like a public hearing where mm -hmm. in a controlled environment, people can ask questions? So then that's a good point. Maybe we should flip over to the... Um, the proposed agenda and discuss that first and then we can circle back to this because this might change. 
Um, let me see. I'm just going to move something. OK. Can you see the Word document, tentative agenda? Yes. OK. So I am just taking, I'm taking the lead. I'm putting together the slides for this. So I just threw together this agenda very quickly, but totally open for amending and changing. Um, I do think it's important to talk about what is a comprehensive plan, why it's important and kind of outline, you know, what's our role, what's the, what's the timeline look like a little bit. I mean, I, if, if all of this stuff is important enough to discuss, I think it's more of a sharing information rather than engaging and starting to have a discussion. And then we lean on the survey as the kickoff point for input and discussion. Um, Larry, I see your hand is raised. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I just, I was just thinking like in general, the meet the steering committee. Um, I think it should be more focused on like the comprehensive plan kickoff or something like that. Because this really okay. is like the first, I don't know that anybody really wants to meet us, but I, I would right. hope so. But, um, but I do think a lot of people, people will be more, um, more engaged with the idea that this, this is an mm -hmm. you know, initial meeting. That it's sure. yeah, that's... yeah, that sounds good to me. How long, uh, how long have we, do, do we feel this meeting is going to be? Um, I definitely would cap it at an hour and a half, but I, I feel like an hour might be more palatable. Yeah, I think an hour and a half is probably too long. Yeah. Should we say an hour? Max, yeah. We could, we could aim to do it shorter. Public hearings tend to be, Charlene, what would you say, half an hour usually? On a good day, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Some of the wild, hmm. some of the wild ones go longer, but uh, yeah. And I don't, I don't think is this, this is not going to be a real public hearing. It's just going to be a public meeting at and educational more. Yeah. If we don't, if we don't take questions, then you know, an hour is probably probably okay. I was wondering if we can have a, um, one of the statements saying, "What does a comprehensive plan do?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I would say, what's the impact? Oh, what's the impact, yeah. Mm. Okay, good. Great. Other comments? I'm not looking at faces, so I can't see if people have names. I mean, have hands raised. So this is our first public meeting. Is that what it's going to be? So it's like, join the join the steering committee's first public meeting. Well, these are, we're having a public meeting right now, actually. This is more designed to share what the process is, how, how we're going about it, and, and key how you can be involved going forward. I think that part is really important. So it's join, join the committee's status meeting. Well, are we going to, we're going to be asking people to join subcommittees. Um, do we far, wanna... far along April 2022, but yes, eventually. You think that far out? Um, for now, if, if we look at the timeline, the getting the consultant hired, getting them to do the initial visioning meetings, um, then having them do the field work to see where we're at now, and then getting their recommendations on what the subcommittee area should be. It's, it's, it's gonna take a while. All right, then, then we probably don't wanna bring it up now because people will have forgotten it by then. Yeah. We have a very long runway ahead of us where we want to get people engaged early, but there isn't really any heavy lifting to do yet. So we want people to know what the process looks like and what's on the table for the future. But 
no one's really, other than answering the survey, we're not asking people to um, get their hands too dirty yet. Maybe, maybe we should, yeah, you yeah, have the timeline, but emphasize that this is a long process mm -hmm. so that we can get everyone involved and that we are going to a consultant, that we're just gathering information and working with the consultant to um, synthesize it, mm -hmm. and, but emphasize the length of, of the process. Yeah. And that it's not odd for us. It, it, that's how long it takes. Mm -hmm. Do we want to say anything in here about the frequency of our readouts of progress? Um, oh, yeah, because we are going to be doing town board updates. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're going to be making some progress. We're going to be making some decisions. Um, we Beyond the town board, we probably want feedback on some of them. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is that when we get the draft RFP that we uh, distribute it with the planning board and, you know, the various boards and, of course, the town board, because they're the ones that are going to authorize it and get their feedback from it, too. Do we want to hold a public hearing on it or leave it just to the town? I, 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 or it's a request for a proposal to have a, a public hearing on something like that is, is not usual. I, you can do whatever you want, but it's not a usual. Okay. One to three. I think I agree with you on that. Do we like for the title, if, um, join us for the comprehensive Plan, join us for a comprehensive plan kickoff. Join us for an introductory. It's really the comprehensive master plan. Right. Well, it's so long. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, raise your hand if you like the, the word, the plan kickoff. Yeah, and maybe something with help, help, help form the vision for Lewisboro. I mean, in addition to the kickoff. I don't want to overpromise though, because we're not actually getting into the vision. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There will be a visioning meeting eventually. But is not. this a comprehensive master plan or is it just a master plan? I mean, are our master plans comprehensive? Is this like, are we just? It's AKA, comprehensive plan, also known as master plan. Sometimes it's known as the vision plan, <laughs> but it's usually a comprehensive master plan. Mm -hmm. Could we agree to just call it the comprehensive plan in our communications? Sure. Would that be? Would we be breaking any rules there? Like, what is it known at? What's like, Larry? What's the term of art? I, I think the eighty-five plan was the comprehensive was a comprehensive plan, but the terms are like in planning; they're kind of used interchangeably with comp yeah. plan, master plan, general plan, and there's a couple of other terms: vision plan, vision plan, strategic mm. plan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, comp plan seems to be the. Yeah. the direction and I think that was our original um the committee formation the steering committee formation I think was it was it was referred oh, okay. to as the comprehensive that, that's plan. it's in the resolution yeah. and it's, that's correct yeah so let's stick with just comprehensive plan to make so, it easier and also I don't I mean I I was the one who threw off like kickoff but I guess it's it is like an informational meeting we're just trying to get provide some information mm -hmm. maybe it's not a kickoff maybe it's a Comprehensive plan information, informational meeting. Yeah, but kickoff has a nice, <laughs> nice ring to it. Yeah, I guess it is an informational meeting. Oh, it's tough. I that sounds kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, yeah. Kickoff is sort of like, oh, okay, we're doing something. <laughs> I, you know, kickoff gives the indication that we are just starting, that we haven't gone down the road without them, that kind of thing. So. 
Um, I'm not sure kick up isn't a isn't an appropriate word. Mm. Yeah, it's a nice word, but maybe not appropriate. The informational meeting. Is there a non-boring uh, word for informational meeting? <laughs> My gosh, we're so boring. I know. We I might have to think of the word. We we might have to take this <laughs> offline because we're go we've gone <laughs> yeah. over our allotted time on the agenda. Um, I think that's why it I found interesting. Oh my gosh. I think that's why I just reverted to meet the, the steering committee because I was like, well, at least mm. that sounds human. But well I just envision that we're all spending five minutes talking about our resume. <laughs> <laughs> All the right. crime which we definitely don't want to do. No, I think we should just introduce our names and be done with it. That's mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's all homework item. If you don't mind, when we when we hang up tonight, just kick it around in your head a little bit, and if we can shoot around some ideas over the next couple of days, the sooner we can get the graphic out. Um, you know alerting people to when this is happening the better um just give everybody a chance to plan ahead so um all right so i'm gonna stop sharing my screen and um dan um it looks like you're on D if you i can't tell yep you're unmuting okay great so we have you on the agenda to just add your thoughts, comments on what you've heard so far tonight. Um, Great. Go for it. Thank you. Good meeting as usual. You guys are tight and effective. Um, the survey, I, I think it's uh, really uh, a great thing. I, I agree with where uh, Charlene was taking it, which is to think of it really in terms of uh, input for the RFP that um, not to get into specifics, but what what do people want to cover? So it's it's because obviously like, you know, asking uh, or scoping is a part of sort of begging the question, right? And although yes, you know, things can come up later in the plan and, and be a part of it, but why not try to try to go into it with, you know, eyes open as much. So, so yeah, and, and the uh, answers could be like, you know, it could be an easy survey where it's like uh, list a whole bunch of list all the things that you see in everybody else's plan and more. And then people can say, you know, this is really important has to go in or you should be included, but it's not that important. Or I don't think it should even be in the plan. And like that would give you hard data like as, well, you know, this is what people think we ought to be talking about. Um, I agree that uh, I, I would be surprised if there, you know, if you didn't wander into zoning. I mean, if we said land use is such a big part of it, like how could you, you not be uh, looking at that? It would be uh, strange to come out of it with untouched. And then there's always the possibility that you look at like new zoning systems or, you know, uh, or, or sort of overlays or, um, mm -hmm. or, uh, or, you know, a form-based zoning for, for Hamlet centers or whatever, you know? So, so I would say definitely stay open to that. I love the vision piece. I think that's, that's great. That should be in there. Uh, just also just want to note that, um, you know, a lot of baseline data can come from the County. They're always saying how they, you know, they've got all the systems to do all that and generate that. And that you could put in that request like early and then have that input as part of the, all the data that you're looking at to help people sort of start thinking about the planning. So, you know, in parallel, you could go ahead and just tell them to, you know, start, start working on it. And, um, and the last meeting there was uh, just some touching on communications and how uh, it, it'd be good if we thought broader than just the antenna committee's uh, mission on the, on the, cell towers and I'm just alerting you that 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 you're not the first people to think of this and I think they're already heading in that direction and the idea was that we need to 
move to something that's more of a sort of communications on the whole. So I think when, when you get a chance to meet with them, you'll find they've already done a whole lot of thinking about these things. And, um, you know, maybe the sooner the better, because again, that will inform like, oh, you know, this stuff should all go in the scope. Um, and just thought on, on meet the committee, um, maybe you can make it more interesting by finding a, a, a real interviewer, or a legitimate interviewer type or a newspaper, you know, editor to come and, and ask those same, ask those questions or whatever else. And then, and then at least it's kind of interactive and maybe, maybe a little bit more interesting, just, just a thought. And you could add like, um, following up with, uh, people can ask questions, but do it, do it through the chat, say, so it's sort of managed and it's not, not too hard to, to deal with. Um, and, um, yeah, that's what I got. Great meeting. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions for Dan based on what we've talked about tonight or what he just said? Oh, and by the way, uh, Jane had her second Vax shot, uh, yesterday and today she's a little bit, so <laughs> that's why she, she sends her regrets. We should get Jessica Lehman to write an article prior to the public meeting. Yeah. Does anybody have a connection with her? I do. Okay. She's, well, so does, so does she's our uh, writer for the town board and for the town of Lewisboro. So the board does, I, but I do also from the CAC. Okay. How, how would be the best, what would be the best way to handle that? Um, we should just, um, I'll, I'll engage with her and ask her what, uh, if she'd be interested in writing an article. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. The problem with newspapers is they tend to write things after they happen, but, uh, um, well, you know, I'll announce like, the service. How, you know, or how she'd like to engage or she, maybe she'd want to have a session with us. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you for looking into that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll check with her. And it would certainly help to get the word out about the survey also. No other questions for me? Was there something about like uh, funding something or some question for the town board or something? I forgot she brought up. Um, oh, I mentioned... no? oh, sorry, go ahead, Larry. I was going to say we were talking about uh, technology that might be available through the town for uh, surveys or collecting information. So that would be something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a, a minor thing, right? You know, a subscription survey monkey is just is, is not going to be much. And, and then, yeah, you do have the Google Forms tool as well. So whichever, whichever ones you guys are feel are going to be more effective. I'm sure it's fine. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And we will definitely... Um, and getting the word out about the meeting and getting the word out about the survey. Um, would you say the best way to do that is just to communicate with, continue communicating with you and Jane via email and we can figure out a plan of action of, you know. Um, yeah, the Jane, you know, Jane's been uh, a big part of the communications cycles in uh, the town and helping with that. So she knows all the channels for getting it out through the, through the town channels. And then, uh, you know, we can encourage a little viral stuff and make sure it goes out on social media and different different groups and everything. So, uh, and then I think somebody brought up, you know, Parks and Rec, they have their own list. And then of course they, they run the seniors meetings. So that's great. You know, maybe, uh, maybe if, uh, if the, you know, maybe they can even uh, organize an event or something where they, Bring the seniors to view it, or you know, or I don't know. Also, she Go has ahead. a uh, not a not an email list, but she has a list of the new families in town too. Although mm. it's it's only addresses; she doesn't have emails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, they do those uh, new new resident like meetup kind of things. I think there's even one happening pretty soon. You, know, you guess maybe if you had like a standard like, hey, there's this plan going on go to the website you know they could hand that out actually 
to the new residents because I think new residents' input is really interesting because they just moved here because they like the place for some reason, you know, and they have a different view of it. So, um, yeah, you could check in with Dana about including a little note about the, the work on the plan in the new resident kit. That sounds good. We'll add that. And, and, you know, maybe you should start, you know, you're talking about doing subcommittees um, in the future, but maybe you have a communications subcommittee that starts a little earlier because, you know, you're, you are releasing some stuff and, and, you know, so you could, you could think about starting to at least uh, solicit interest in that. And maybe that forms, you know, within the next couple of months, something comes together on that and you have that available as a, as an extension of your committee. Mm. And there's a lot of, you know, people that'd be really excited to help you out with that. I think good, good people. So. Great. Thank you, Dan. Yep. Okay. Um, doesn't seem like there are any other questions for Dan. So let's quickly look at our, um, let me share my screen, action items. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody have any, a few of these I know we've taken care of, um, but does anybody have any questions or updates they wanna share with the group? about open action items. Charlene? Um, so I, I spoke to Norma about um, having someone do a uh, little informational on the census. Uh, she, and she suggested her census person who's been eating, drinking, living the census for uh, the past two years, I think. Um, so that person, um, I'm waiting to get uh, his um, information and I will get in contact with him and see what dates he's available and see what dates you are available so that uh, we can have him in. And maybe we can focus some attention specifically on Lewisboro because um, they, they, they have a lot of raw numbers now. Great. Anyone else? Oh, you spelled my name wrong. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, only one F. Okay, make sure to fix that going forward. Okay, great. And we will continue to work on that yeah. behind the scenes. Should we use our extra time to keep working on a title for our meeting since that's the most time sensitive. Unless anybody else has another, would that be okay? Sure. <laughs> All right, let me bring that, that back up. I assume you're gonna change that on the banner as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once we, once we figure right. out what we're, what we're gonna Th this may be silly, but the color of the ba banner, could we have like a neutral color that's not red, blue, or political? <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> Gee, Charlie, um, you and I go to the same place. I went and looked up what red on a banner means. Actually, is apparently positive meaning. So it's like truth and openness and stuff like that. But I agree, red seemed to. Yeah. Sure, I just you know, use the template. I think I can change. I can always, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, can I, don't, I, I, I don't have any, you know. I can always pitch it and find a different thing. I was just stealing from That's people's attention. PowerPoint. Um, so I, we're, just, I pulled up the thesaurus for synonyms for kickoff. Nice. Uh, begin, commence, embark, enter, Launch, lead off, open, start, strike. Yeah. Maybe those, maybe one of those, or commencement doesn't seem to be the right uh, one. Launch could be appropriate I instead like of kickoff. Yeah, launch is nice. How do we, John, Mark, you like launch? 
go launch or you can go all the way up to blast off or <laughs> so i should have rockets <laughs> maybe i should have rockets and like fireworks and i'm just trying to think of a phrase that would draw interest i know, know. it's so it's tricky comprehensive plan help us launch the comprehensive plan are we asking for their help in this meeting mm -hmm. no <laughs> well, we are asking them to, you know, reminding them to take the survey. That's how that is launching. So, I mean, if we do have a survey that's ready at this point, which we could, mm -hmm. it's four weeks away. I mean, that, that you really know, is the first. Is if you said, hey. I didn't find wish we could. It's four weeks on Apple Music. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> um, what this, the comprehensive plan means to you. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do at this meeting? We're going to say, or maybe we can each speak or we have different slides or we have different slides and everyone takes a part and say, here's what plans are about. Here's how we're going about it and how we're going to be interactive to outreach through meetings and a survey. And then here's our timeline. Mm -hmm. And then here's like the deliverable and you'll have some, and uh, we want to hear from you. Check yeah. out the survey. So we'll sort of like explain what it is and give timeline and tell them who we are and how we're getting there. But so yeah. this is, so it's like, it's like a project. It just, the problem is like, I keep using the same words. Like, it's like a project timeline, abstract, um, overview, all really boring stuff. I can't think of presentation or it's a charrette, but it's not really a charrette. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I what John, what you just said, like what the comprehensive plan means to you, or why something with why, why be why should you be interested in the comprehensive plan, or why a comprehensive plan? Hmm. We're not really saying that in here, though. We could like a project introduction, right? It's like a this is a project, this is our project to come up with a master plan in multiple steps, so. Right, but we're not really saying why we're doing it. We're doing it because the town board asked us to. <laughs> we are covering why we need, why the town needs it. Yeah. Or something, we do need to have a why or else it'll be. But I think, you know, bringing it personal to them might draw some interest, you know, rather than just uh, kind of a bleak, what the comprehensive plan or why you know well we do can we have, have a colon we can do both what the comprehensive plan means to you colon a project launch right project launch is that going to fit on your is that yeah. going to fit on your banner though i'll figure it out yeah <laughs> just make sure we get launch in there so you're going to have a rocket on there right <laughs> yeah that could be fun <laughs> There's your infographic. I'll use graphic. like a kid's birthday party template <laughs> and make it really whimsical. Um, I like that. Any other thoughts? This one, the what it means to you, project launch, a project launch. Yeah, let's let's look at it for, for a day or two. But yeah, you know, I think that's, I think that might draw more interest than just. A yeah. Launch. Yeah. A project launch or project launch? Project launch. Yeah, take the A out, I think. Okay. All right. Anything missing from the agenda? I think it kind of covers it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. We should um, figure out. You, and Kate, you're, you're uh, great at this. Figure out the timing of all of these so we don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we did we say an hour? Yeah, I think that's the most you're going to do. Yeah. Maybe we could even do 45 minutes to an hour. We'll see. Yeah. OK. OK, great. Thank you. Well, I'll put I'll let that marinate overnight. And if we like it in the morning, then I'll do a new banner 
and then we can the goal would be to start getting the banner out like this week before our next meeting hence the time sensitive when's the next uh, town board meeting dan Mon monday already next monday so it'd yep. be nice to have something that maybe blurbed in the town board meeting I'm sure we'd be happy to blurb it that's a great <laughs> point so what if you just have the the title and the the infographic basically would that be enough for you for the town board sure i mean you know it's going to be like oh we want everybody to know there's this meeting coming up and okay. and i mean i don't know that we have we could share we could share it on the screen maybe but you know it's mostly about just announcing it part of the announcements okay thank you so much we we'll just point them to our part of the web of the town website and then yep. uh, okay and did you decide is it going to be only over zoom or zoom with youtube good question i i think it sounds like we're leaning towards just broadcast on youtube because we're not at this point in the process we are not having an open forum where people will be asking questions or providing input that we're going to lean on the survey for that first yes i think it definitely fits with our mission to be really fair and equal because you know the likelihood that you can attend at a particular day and time is low, but you can always rewatch it on YouTube and everybody can respond to the survey in their own time at what's convenient for them. So we're just well, I think attend is a good word. Attend is a good word. We definitely want them to attend. We're just not sure they can join, right? They're not really joining our meeting. They're attending it. The right. And right. it could be put on the cable TV. I don't know if anybody, does anybody watch that anymore? <laughs> Everybody's on the internet, but, but, you know, maybe for the seniors, like maybe they're not on the internet. And so it could, it could go in there too. Oh, that would be great. Can't hurt. So we're, we're going to get this out two months before. Are we going to like do a recurring? So to remind them. Because two months is, if you don't put it in your calendar, I don't know how you remember it, but maybe that's just me. Well, it'll, it's like, a, it's not quite, it's like a month, right? But we should, yeah, this is just to save the date and then closer to, we will oh, okay. to, you okay. know, Great. have more, we have the actual instructions and. Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, we have six more minutes. Are there other things we wanna circle back on? Did anybody have, I know we kind of closed the discussion on the survey quickly to move on. Were, were there any lingering thoughts or questions? And if not, no pressure. We can always end the meeting a little early. <laughs> we have a regular meeting next Tuesday, right? We're yes, that. correct. Our next meeting is next Tuesday, May 11th. So we can, uh, do we have to, uh, can we circle back on this next Tuesday or is this done? On the agenda, sure. Yeah, I just want to get the save the date out before then. So just the, the title is really the only thing we have to nail down. Well, so this is the Lewisboro, right? So Lewisboro comprehensive plan, right? It's a Lewisboro comprehensive plan. It's not the Westchester. It's not the yeah, that's uh, true too. Mm -hmm. New York State, it's, right? Um, yeah. So project launch. I love project launch. I love attend. I think or join or maybe that's separate. But mm -hmm. what yeah. what the Lewisboro project plan means to you? I mean, just Lewisboro Comprehensive Plan Project Launch. Um, join us, attend. Attend the Lewisboro, attend. Maybe it's like attend 
with like stars <laughs> explosion attend mm -hmm. the stickers which says like attend and then it's lewisboro comprehensive plan project line you know dash project launch project launch what if you're in the advertising field and you present your concept and your budget and your storyboards what is that called is that called a charrette or a launch or a, what do you call it pitching oh pitch right that's probably not a good phrase for this but pitch yeah let's let's let it marinate overnight i think i mean it doesn't i'll i can work on a graphic too it's not like it all has to be on one line like it is here it can be broken out let's see if i can make it visually interesting but um yeah, let me know in the morning if you have if what the Lewisboro Comprehensive Plan means to you, project launch, if you have any objections to that or or feel strongly that something else is better. Well, we can leave it at that. Well, I think it's I think it's a little confusing if we say what the Lewisboro and then project launch. It's like what the Lewisboro, it's kind of a twist on the Lewisboro comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. And then we're saying it's project launch. I mean, I think we are launching, we're launching the Lewisboro comprehensive plan, plan comma planning process. I don't know. It's we're launching the Lewis, we don't have the plan yet. We're working on the plan. We're planning the plan, right? So I don't know what the- Maybe if we switch the order project launch and then what the Lewisboro comprehensive I, plan means to you. I would have project launch as a subtext to the first line. Yes. Um, Lewisboro comprehensive plan kick up. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm struggling with the first time that you, anyone brings up the topic of the Lewisboro comprehensive plan I can understand it said Lewisboro comprehensive plan as a subtext, what this means to you. But I'm, I'm sort of thinking like starting with the word what. Um, we're trying to, uh, the title of the thing is the Lewisboro comprehensive plan, either project launch or what this means to you. Yeah, there you go. Lewisboro plan, what this means to you and what this means to you. Yeah. What's it? What this, what this, what and then project launch can just be on a different line. Yeah. Do I see nodding heads? Yeah, not, if, not if you're feeling good about it. No, yeah, it seems to work. I think we're getting closer. Yeah. Okay. Sleep on it. Let me know in the morning and I'll work on, start working on a graphic accordingly. <laughs> But we're not going to, all these bullet points, like the agenda for it, we're not sharing. That's no. internal. Okay. Yeah, that's internal only. Just the title is what's getting, getting out there. And the date and the time. Okay, thank you, everyone. I know that can be tedious, but I think it's important. Um, okay, so we're, all, we're pretty much at time. So... Um, our usual process where we'll discuss the agenda and approve it between meetings and keep our other action items going. Um, but in the meantime, thank you to very much to the committee members. Thank you to everybody who's watching on YouTube. I move to adjourn the meeting. Second, so moved. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Thank you so much, everybody. We will see you next Tuesday.